Hello and welcome back to Humans in Society. This video focuses on the topic data collection under the subject English for academic and professional purposes. We do studies to gather information and draw conclusions. The type of conclusion we draw depends on the study method used. There are two types of data collection techniques in research, the experimental study and the observational study. An experimental study has the researcher purposely attempting to influence the results. The goal is to determine what effect a particular treatment has on the outcome. Researchers take measurements or surveys of the sample population. The researchers then manipulate the sample population in some manner. After the manipulation, the researchers re-measure or re-survey using the same procedures to determine if the manipulation possibly changed the measurements. Since variables are controlled in a design experiment, the results allow the researcher to claim causation or a cause and effect conclusion. In an observational study, the sample population being studied is measured or surveyed as it is. The researcher observes the subjects and measures variables, but does not influence the population in any way or attempt to intervene in the study. There is no manipulation by the researcher. Instead, data is simply gathered and correlations are investigated. Since observational studies do not control any variable, the results can only allow the researcher to claim association and not causation. The survey is a form of observational study since the researcher does not influence the outcome. The survey is a very traditional way of conducting research. It is a flexible approach used to investigate a wide range of topics. When you want to conduct a survey, it often employs the questionnaire as a tool for data collection. A questionnaire is a data gathering tool, having a set of printed or written questions with a choice of answers, devised for the purposes of a survey or statistical study, and given to the respondents to answer. It is used in different fields such as research, politics, education, media, and others. While interviewing the respondents allows flexibility because the researchers can clarify things or rephrase questions and can get complete responses, the questionnaire is sometimes preferred over the interview for the following reasons. Questionnaires are less expensive. They take less time to administer. They can be disseminated through post or electronic mail. No interviewer biases are introduced and privacy and anonymity are more likely to be assured. A good questionnaire is valid, reliable, clear, and interesting. It is valid in that it asks what it intends to ask. It is reliable because it gets the same answer if the same question is posed repeatedly in a short time. It is clear because it is easily understood, and it is interesting if it is completed by the respondents and gets better response rate. To be able to get the accurate data, survey questionnaire preparation takes time and requires thorough planning. A questionnaire that is poorly crafted may lead to wrong conclusions since the data collected may not be accurate. Remember the following when you create a survey questionnaire. Design, test, and revise. In designing a questionnaire, it is important to ask the right questions. Depending on the data you want to get from your respondents, you may use any of the following types of questions. The closed-ended questions can be answered by a simple yes or no. For example, do you have internet at home? Yes or no? Open-ended questions require more thought and more than a simple one-word answer. For example, why is the internet important? Give one or two reasons. The options available should be comprehensive so that the respondent can find an option which best suits his or her answer. You can include others or please specify category as one of the options. You can also let them check as many items as applicable, but be sure to mention this in your options. For example, when do you use your computer? Choose all that apply. A. Work. B. School. C. 
C. Games. D. Social media. E. Others. Please specify. For questions that involve assessing attitudes or opinions, a scale with a range of responses may be used. In this case, the Likert scale is commonly used. The Likert scale is an orderly scale from which respondents choose the option that best supports their opinion. It can also be used to measure someone's attitude by measuring the extent to which they agree or disagree with a particular question of statement. Likert scale questions are a form of closed question and one of the most widely used tools in researching popular opinion. They use psychometric testing to measure beliefs, attitude, and opinion. The questions use statements and respondent then indicates how much they agree or disagree with that statement. Usually, a scale of 0 to 10 is provided with Likert scale questions, although shorter scales may also be possible. For example, we should have internet connection at home. Choose 1. 5. Strongly agree. 4. Agree. 3. Neutral. 2. Disagree. 1. Strongly disagree. Also under design is using appropriate format. Taking this into consideration is important because the look of the questionnaire may decide whether the respondent is going to fill it out or not. The title should be highlighted and should reflect the main objective of the research. If possible, divide the questionnaire into sections according to the content, example or boxes with bold headings, and it should flow smoothly from one section to another with appropriate filtering. If your respondents involve older persons, a bigger font size should be used. Finally, include a cover letter stating the objective of your study and your affiliation. Most importantly, it should include a confidentiality clause. This is to inform your respondents on how you're going to use the collected information. Arrange the questions logically. The order of the questions should flow in a logical sequence. Start with simple questions and move on to more complex questions. You can start with a demographic profile like age, address, and others. Make instructions clear. Instructions should be very clear and introductory comments should be appropriate. Short instructions help the respondents understand easily and help them set their mind on answering the questions. The respondent should be told exactly what is wanted. For example, put a check mark in the box if you experience pain or X if not. A pilot test is a crucial step in the design of a questionnaire before data collection begins. It will help detect flaws in the questionnaire in terms of content, grammar, and format. You can ask your colleagues, family, or friends to comment on the questionnaire. By doing so, mistakes in terms of content, grammar, or format will be minimized. This should be followed by asking the potential respondents to answer the questionnaire and provide their feedback. For those questions which you feel may be confusing or sensitive, it is important to ask respondents to comment specifically during the pilot test. You will evaluate for general content, organization, and tone by adding, deleting, and organizing information if necessary. When revising, it can be helpful to answer the following questions. Who is your audience? Are your objectives enough? Have you included enough information? Do you have more information than you need? Have you chosen the proper words to express your ideas? Is the questionnaire wordy, repetitive, or inconsistent? When you have done all these, you have crafted a good survey questionnaire. It does not seem easy at first, but when you start doing it, you will find it very helpful. Conducting a survey calls for a more systematic way in order to achieve the aims of a certain survey conducted. The personal approach involves the researcher conducting the survey directly to the respondents. The face-to-face -face structured interview is when the questions on the survey are asked directly to the respondent by the researcher while they are in the same room together. Questions on the survey when asked directly to the respondents usually produces a good response rate. This also provides a great opportunity for the researcher to observe the participants. However, there is a high chance of bias due to the interaction between the respondent and the interviewer. 
the principle of anonymity is also lost. In the telephone survey, the survey is done using landline or cellular phones to answer the questions to the respondents. It provides anonymity better than face-to-face -face interviews, but it is not ideal for data gathering when it requires the participants to see a visual material. In addition, telephone calls for survey purposes are not appropriate for long questions. The self-administered approach is when the survey is administered by the respondent while the researcher waits for them to return the completed questionnaire. The paper and pencil survey is a traditional method wherein the respondents must be present in the administration of the survey. This method is ideal for respondents who are not computer literate or do not have an access to the internet. However, the paper and pencil self-administered technique necessitates an expensive reproduction of survey questionnaires and a tiring manual distribution of the questionnaires and collection afterwards. The mail survey is administered by mailing the questionnaires to individuals who are given enough time to read and ponder on the information asked. This method facilitates easy administering of the survey. The visual quality of the instrument is also controlled by reviewing the mail before they are sent. Anonymity can also be easily achieved through this technique. However, there are increasingly lower response rates from the participants because hardly anyone uses postal services anymore. The online survey is when the questionnaire is sent through email to a big sample size coming from different locations. This survey technique is ideal to study a huge sample or a sample whose members live in wide geographical areas. This also is less expensive compared to sending survey through mail. Also, many survey companies can help you conduct a survey online with decent precision. The members of the sample must be computer literate in order to answer the survey questions online. This method may also require giving an incentive to the participants. To encourage your respondents to answer and complete the survey, Remember these tips. Follow the KISS principle, which stands for keep it short and simple. Better response rates are associated with concise, simple, and easy to answer survey questionnaires. Ensure confidentiality and anonymity. Give the participants an assurance that their answers will be kept confidential and will only be used for the purpose of the survey. Be professional, courteous, and polite. Saying please and thank you as well as guiding the respondent politely can motivate the participants to finish the survey. Gathering information is essential in helping people make decisions about various topics of interest. The data helps the researcher get a better picture of the perception, perspective, and preferences of particular groups of people. The ideas discussed in this lesson are based on the content standards of the Department of Education. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.